Today we're going to talk about the OM617 and oil pressure. It may not seem like an exciting topic, but when you stop to think about the performance upgrades that go on and the swaps and turbos and things like that, it's kind of something you need to pay attention to. So a lot of people think that these aftermarket turbos that are out there can handle any oil pressure. That simply is not the case. So you need to know what your engine puts out or is capable of putting out and then also match that with the turbo. Chances are there's not going to be an alignment between the aftermarket turbo manufacturer as well as the 617 and we have a solution for that as well. All right, so let's uh, let's get started. Down below, you'll see uh, links to some information. Um, I'm trying to uh, start to put comments in there that are more meaningful. The most important is the OM617 service manual. And uh, the lubrication is actually in section 18. So you can uh, go ahead and pull it up on the link, go down to section 18, and when I reference page numbers, you'll see it in there. It's kind of the format of like a 18.8-500 slash page number. A kind of a convoluted system, but you can follow along then if you know that format and the page number that I reference. So everything I'm going to tell you here is documented in that manual. So it's nothing made up, nothing hypothetical. It's what's put out by Mercedes. Okay, so let's get started now. So as we talk about oil pressure, you'll see in the corner of the screen that I'm actually running through my gears on the dyno car. And you'll see the actual real world oil pressure of a 617 it has a clean filter on it so you can understand the pressures that are going on and how they align with what I'm telling you here okay so the minimum oil pressure so when you're at idle you want to be at 3 bar I'm sorry 0.3 bar which is really 4.4 psi that's next to nothing so if these engines can run at that that's awesome uh, that's that's pretty abusive in my opinion, but that's what's in the manual, right? So under acceleration, uh, it'll rise and it can go up to three bar. Now three bar is roughly 43 psi, so nothing fancy there. I would expect that, and all of that information is on page two of the service manual. But there's a couple other things we need to consider. Let's let's talk about the, uh, the oil pump. All right, so the oil pump has what's called a uh, pressure relief valve. And in that relief valve, it is set to seven bar. Now seven bar is 101 PSI. So if oil is trying to pump and it cannot pump at, at or the, the pressure it takes to pump that oil is beyond seven bar, it's not gonna pump anymore. That's 100 PSI. That is a lot of pressure running through your system, right? That is on page one of the manual. The filter housing is another thing to look at, and that is a very sophisticated piece of engineering, believe it or not, for an oil filter housing. It's got thermostatic controls. It also has a differential um, regulator for, for oil pressure. So the clean side of the filter versus the dirty side of the filter, if you exceed I believe it is 3.5 bar, then all that dirty oil is gonna go ahead and right into your turbo. So think about that. You, ha you have a dirty filter, pressure's building up because it can't push through. The dirty side hits a differential, right? So remember, you could pump up to seven, p seven bar on the dirty side, can't get through, Boom, that relief valve opens, all that junk is headed right to your turbo. That is devastating. That information can be found on page five. Okay, so let's sum this up. Okay, number one, the easiest thing, keep your filter clean. Filters are cheap compared to your engine, so why not just keep a clean filter in there? Keep up with your maintenance, people. At idle, you have to have at least 4.4 PSI, and I'm telling you, I think that's personally very low. If that's what Mercedes says, then that's great, uh, but you need to make sure you have proper pressure at idle. Okay, so under load, you need to have at least 43 PSI, but remember, there's a seven bar relief valve in the pump. 
So that's a lot of pressure. So really it could be 43 PSI to 101. So what does this mean if you're doing a swap? Well, you're not gonna find too many aftermarket turbos that are gonna be able to compensate for 100 PSI of oil pressure. So there are aftermarket oil pressure regulators out there. TurboSmart makes one, sold a ton of these things. They're great, they're very small, and we'll be covering that in a future video. Likewise, we'll be covering installs and oil requirements of very specific turbos. So that's not really an issue for this. Here, I just want you to understand what's going on in your oil system on your 617 so that you're prepared down the road if you want to go ahead and upgrade your turbo. So I ask you to stay tuned for future videos. And that means, once again, click that subscribe button down below if you are not a subscriber to this channel. Again, I'm working hard to improve the quality of the content and the amount of content that's meaningful to you. So thanks for watching.